Miracy. I'm John Schumacher, and you're listening to Making It. So I run a consulting and training business focused on helping coaches, consultants, and course sellers use sales webinars to sell their programs and services. I really didn't have the entrepreneurial bug early. You know, I was more interested in playing video games and sports and stuff like that when I was a kid. I did see my dad as an example of what you could create on your own, right? So I did have this bug implanted in me early that I wanted to, you know, do something out of the ordinary, right? Out of the traditional path, mainly because I saw the lifestyle he was able to create. And and so that's a a seed that was planted early, um, watching my father, you know, his lifestyle, the business he was able to create, Um, was a motivating factor as I got into my 20s to do my own thing. So my original background isn't in marketing and sales. It was actually in healthcare as a licensed physical therapist. And actually, that was my degree in school. You know, I I got a a health kinesiology degree. I went to graduate school uh, for two years. I got a master's degree in physical therapy and then actually went into that field um, before kind of burning out on that field a little bit after a couple of years and kind of looking for a way to switch careers, work for myself and that kind of thing. So I actually spent a good bulk of my 20s actually in college and school. I was passionate about it at the time and then just kind of fell out of passion with it as I got into my later 20s. And then that's really where I started looking for really a way to pursue my own freedom. So I was actually at the time, one of the, I would say maybe a handful of physical therapists that were posting video content on a fairly new site called YouTube back then. Right. And so I was, this was in like 2009 and, and that's where I really started to fall in love with marketing and and creating content. I spent all my extra time in the evenings, uh, you know, researching marketing and SEO. And some of those videos actually got hundreds of thousands of views and I created little information products and things like that to sell around that time. It was more of a side hustle, I guess you'd call it, uh, while I was working my full-time job until I got to a point where I I felt comfortable or at least comfortable enough making the leap to actually work for myself, which was scary in and of itself. So I started making some money on the side. I was saving up some money. I'd hired a coach at the time who you know, was listening to me. And I was, I remember, I remember the moment where I was like complaining about my job and like, ah, I just really don't want to do this anymore. And he's like, John, he's like, just quit, just quit. You're good enough. You'll figure it out. You're smart enough. Just quit. And, and that was really the, the push that I needed from an outside coach to as, as nervous as I was to, to, you know, give up a, a nice income to actually make the leap and have enough faith in myself that I could figure it out and, and make it work. And, you know, lo and behold, I did. I actually had a show, basically like a webinar series that I started with. Um, and I would do one live webinar a week. And I actually did that for over a year where I would interview or feature other entrepreneurs and innovators in the healthcare industry, right? And I literally did this from the corner of my two bedroom condo in California. I had like a little sheet behind me. It was a video uh, slash audio show basically that was positioned as a live webinar. And then we would repurpose the audio and things like that into like podcast platforms and stuff like that. But anyway, like I would invite these people who are much bigger than me, obviously. I mean, you know, they would, they would help promote the webinar to their audience. So my list started to grow. My visibility started to grow. I mean, I did that consistently over, over the course of that year. And, you know, lo and behold, we started to grow and I started getting paid writing assignments, speaking, consulting. The podcast that we were repurposing was actually the top healthcare entrepreneurship show on iTunes, which is, I know a small niche, but still, I mean, there were people like literally discovering me all over the place from this, like just series of, of webinars that I was utilizing and partnering with and repurposing. And, and so around 2014 ish, I pivoted and I launched a new brand in the marketing space where I started teaching other people 
you know, how to use live video and webinars and, and these kind of media strategies to grow their audiences, right? And that's really where I got into the marketing field. We, we all think in our minds that, especially as you put yourself out there, creating content and materials and doing webinars, I mean, you're really putting yourself out there, right? And that's pretty scary for a lot of people. Um, I would think I would go back and tell myself, one, don't worry so much about what other people think. They don't really care that much about you. And that's not in a bad way. That's just in a, they don't really think about you or judge you, or we all think that people are watching us more than, than they really are. Right. And so one would be to just kind of relax, smile, have fun. Nothing's going to kill you. Um, another thing would be on, um, is focus, right? So for me, I've, gone down a several rabbit holes over the years and that have distracted me from really where I could have gotten to earlier. So I would say once you find something you enjoy doing and you're and you're in in the market actually wants that thing, you know, stay with it. Continue to grow, continue to expand your audience, your reach, your traffic, your marketing, and just do more of that. If you want to get good at something, you need to ask, like, what mindsets and what skill sets do I need to possess in order to get to that goal? Like, for me, it was, I kind of stumbled into using webinars. I just said, oh, this is cool. This is new. This is different. Let me pursue that because one of my desires was just to do something different too, right? And so that's really how I initially discovered, you know, webinars, live video, partnership promotions. Like, before I really officially learned anything, I just sort of pursued things, and then it's like, well, what do I need to learn to get there, right? I need to learn how to speak more effectively. I need to learn how to network. I need to learn how to manage a scheduling system. Like I need to learn how to sell and market my services and, and create an online program. I mean, there's a lot of things we have to learn. So that's really the key is like, okay, what's the, what skill sets do I need to learn? Who has those skill sets already that I could potentially reach out to? And what, what do I need to learn to get to my goal? And here's a key, key takeaway, I think, be okay looking foolish in the beginning. Like I've been okay in the beginning looking foolish in the name of doing and getting things done and taking action. Like when I was in physical therapy, I didn't know anything when I started in clinic or, I mean, I went to school, but you know, that only teaches you a very small amount. And so in order to learn what I needed to do, I had a mentor there and he was really good. I, I was okay asking him questions every single day. If I didn't know something, I'd write it down. I'd ask the question every single time. And I don't even care if, if I was in front of my patients. I was supposed to be their guide. Here I am asking another person questions. And they probably thought, here's, you know, this guy's a rookie. This guy's young. And I was, you know, was, yeah, I was, right? And I was early on. So, but I learned so fast by being willing to, to be foolish a little bit, to look foolish in front of people's eyes. And in the name of learning, in the name of, of pursuing knowledge more rapidly, I think you'll learn more by doing. There's only so much you could learn in a course or a book. And then you get better. So the more you're willing to look foolish and be okay with that, and just even though it's uncomfortable, I think the quicker you'll grow, especially if you use those opportunities as learning and expansion ideas and processes. I'm John Schumacher, and you've been listening to Making It. You can find out more about me over at johnschumacher.com. That's John, J-O-N, Schumacher, S-C-H-U-M-A-C-H-E-R, just like the race car driver, johnschumacher.com. Making It is part of the Mirror CFM podcast network, which also includes such shows as Course Lab and Just Between Coaches. This episode of Making It was produced by Danny Bermant and Jeff Govertson. Cynthia Lamb is a supervising producer. Danny Innie is our executive producer. Post-production by Post Office Sound. So you catch the great episodes that are coming up on Making It, go ahead and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening right now. And if you like the show, please leave us a starred review. It's the best way to help us get these ideas to more people. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.